chain of his own. We opened our first three locations in the first four months and um, haven't really looked back. Fired Pie has grown to 21 locations in Arizona and was about to expand to other states. And then, of course, the pandemic hit, and it was really um, scary. I mean, it, it you know, uh, I thank goodness for the PP, first PPP loan. It really saved us. When vaccines started to roll out in states like Arizona allowed indoor dining at 50 percent and now 100 percent, Morgan was excited to ramp back up and hire more staff again. All of a sudden, we, we weren't getting any applicants. He has 60 positions open, all paying above minimum wage, and some are well-paying salary management positions. It's really shocking. It's across our industry right now. Restaurant associations are reporting this trend across the country. And here are the top reasons why former employees and potential new ones are not applying. One, their ability to collect enhanced unemployment benefits has reduced the pressure to rush back to work. Two, they may still have to take care of children or other loved ones still forced to stay at home. And three, some are making a career switch. You know, some people, you know, are very concerned that they lost their jobs, they got let go, they had no, no means, and they, they're afraid to come back to this industry, I think. Morgan has offered to give bonuses, pay for the commute to work, and higher wages. He's drawn in a few new members, but not enough. Now he's hoping for state and local leaders to organize return to work incentives. Without that, he may have to close some locations. And more closures is the opposite of what the restaurant industry needs. I'm Alicia Nieves reporting. Other industries are still cutting jobs. That's according to the latest unemployment data. Jobless claims rising last week to 744,000. The Labor Department says that's up by 16,000 from the week prior. Before the pandemic, applications for unemployment were usually below 220,000 a week. The CDC now confirming the UK variant is now the most dominant strain of COVID here in the U.S. Three weeks ago, it was only 27% of all cases. It's striking younger Americans the hardest. The director of the CDC says extracurricular sports should be limited. It's more contagious for everybody. Um, but the good news is we have managed to vaccinate a large chunk of older Americans. But that means that this pandemic is now starting to really rage among young people, including children. Experts agree the current vaccines are effective against fighting it, so they work. Still, it's believed to be slightly more deadly and could be fueling a recent rise in hospitalizations in some parts of the North. Here in Texas, over 8.5 million people have been vaccinated. With at least one dose of a vaccine, more than 5 million Texans are fully vaccinated. Nationally, more than 78 million people have at least one vaccine dose. The numbers of fully vaccinated Americans now at 48 million. The National Institute of Health is starting a study on allergic reactions to some of these vaccines. Researchers want to know if people with histories of allergies or mast cell disorders are more likely to have an allergic reaction, especially to the Pfizer and Moderna versions. Dr. Fauci says the results will help doctors decide how or if it's okay to vaccinate patients with those conditions. U.S. Custom and Border Protection is seeking an exponential increase in counterfeit mask seizures. The CBP has seized more than 34 million counterfeit masks since the start of the pandemic. About 20 million of those were seized in 2021. Most of the masks are modeled to resemble an N95 or KN95 mask, but they don't offer the same level of protection. Waco ISD has a new program helping parents get a head start on teaching their own kids. We'll tell you how to register for the Parents as Teachers program after the break, plus the United Way of Central Texas helping folks impacted by the winter storm. No question about it, being a parent is a full-time job, and part of that job is making sure your kids are learning the basics. Tonight, 25 News reporter Sierra Shipley has more from Waco ISD. A parent is a child's first and most important teacher. So this program is to help moms and dads understand child development, making the best choices for their family. 
Rafaela Jaimez and her son Aron, who is four years old, are in the program and are working hard daily to get him to learn all the basics like his ABCs. Parents as Teachers works with parents as early as prenatal because it's important to start as early as possible since children are actively learning every second of every day. Jaimez says she appreciates the work WISD has done as she and Aron are able to learn together. The most impacting part has been learning how important it is to read to my child. We read every day, and in reading, there's words we don't use on a daily basis. Aron has even started to learn how to write his name, and he won't start preschool until August. The Parents as Teachers program is completely free, and enrollment is always open. You can find out how to do so on our KXXV mobile app. In Waco, Sierra Shipley, 25 News. Sierra, thank you. The director of the CDC expects remote learning to be a thing of the past by September. She says all school reopenings by then could happen regardless of vaccinations. The director says teachers are being vaccinated and other measures are being taken to promote safe learning. Some children between 12 and 15 could actually be eligible for vaccines by early summer. All right, we've got some pop-up storms in the area. Let's go ahead and kick it over to Josh. Yeah, we are tracking some storms across Central Texas this evening, Todd, and it is a mean thunderstorm that's working over parts of Southern Bosque County right now. This is gonna be nearing the uh, Valley Mills area. This was a strong thunderstorm that popped up over Hamilton County. You can see all the prolific lightning with this and a severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 6.30 p.m. for Bosque, Coriel, Hamilton, and extreme western McLennan County as this rolls towards Valley Mills. Now here's the thunderstorm, and I'm gonna put a track on it for you in just a second, but I wanna point out a few things. Notice right here that we are seeing a little bit of a V shape to it. That is a sign this thunderstorm is really punching through the atmosphere and really accessing all of the warm, moist air that it has to feed it. So let's go ahead and put a track on this storm for you. As again, this is capable of hail up to the size of hen eggs now as it continues to track off to the uh, southeast at about 25 miles per hour. We'll put that track for it on it for you. I'm putting it right in the middle of the hell core here as that will continue working down Highway 6. So that would be rolling it through parts of Valley Mills by around 623. China Spring around 642, the Golson area 649, and approaching parts of Waco potentially by around 7 o'clock. So this is something we'll have to watch very, very closely. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go into the hail mode of the radar, and we'll get that latest hail size for you as we look at this storm. And you'll notice right there, the hail size has gone down a bit, so that is a, at least a good sign that the radar is picking that up. But that does mean that that hail is falling out of the storm, potentially somewhere between Crawford or uh, between Cranfield's Gap and Valley Mills as that work, has worked off to the southeast. Earlier, this was showing indications of tennis ball size hail. Now you're seeing that blue more indicative of uh, golf ball size hail. So some good news there, at least the hail size has gone down. We'll go back to the mode of the radar for you as we look at this storm working off to the southeast. And again, we're also watching right here, a sign of a little bit of a hook, and you tend to look at that very closely for maybe some sort of rotation. But as I show you the extra co eagle eye from our Lake Waco uh, area, you're gonna notice one thing, and that is that this storm is continuing to really dump that hail right there. And the good thing that we're seeing is we aren't seeing any sort of rotation, at least right now on our extra co eagle eye. So good news there. But but still, a big hail producer sitting there just off to the south of uh, Cranfield's Gap and moving towards the Valley Mills area. We'll watch it as it tries to work towards McLennan County. Back to the radar real quick. I want to show you the rest of Central Texas as we look at that radar. And you'll see we are also seeing some showers and thunderstorms forming towards the Gatesville area and then back towards northern Lampasas County. All of that trying to work to the east. Those are not severe at this time. The only severe storm we have is this one that again is working through parts of southern Bosque County. And I'm going to keep a closer eye on that hook there. It's looking a bit more like it's spinning just a bit more. That could be the storm being a bit more organized, which would say that could produce the hail a little bit further off to the west. So this thing could still be pretty strong as it rolls into McLennan County. As far as the rest of our weather is concerned through the rest of the evening, we're going to see temperatures fall down into the 60s by the time we head into tonight. 64 in Waco, 66 in Temple, and 64 in Colleen. Normally should be at 53. Future track doesn't even show those storms out there right now, so this is only for about the next two to three hours we'll be watching this. The rest of the night should be fairly quiet, but we'll watch as we go into tomorrow. A dry line will be approaching the I-35 corridor, and as that happens, we could pop a stray shower or thunderstorm along that dry line. And if that happens, the same energies out there today 
for these storms to turn strong to severe very quickly. So we'll show you that risk map, and this is where we're going to be watching for the potential for that tomorrow. A slight risk of severe weather from about Waco, Temple, Colleen, and to the east. That's where I think the bigger threat will be tomorrow. So once we get through tonight, we'll focus more on tomorrow. And again, the potential is there for some large hail with that as well. Let's get over the 10 day forecast real quick because I do have some good news. We've got quiet weather on the way for the weekend. 75 on your Saturday, 82 on your Sunday. Look what happens as we go into next week. A bigger cool down on the way and some pretty good rain chances. 40% chances of rain and temperatures in the 60s, but Todd will just have to watch that storm very closely as it rolls into McLennan County. Of course, we'll be tracking it for you. Sounds good, Josh. The United Way of Central Texas helping Bell County residents impacted by this year's winter storms. Any resident can now apply for assistance to help with bills as part of their winter recovery fund, increased electric bills, plumber fees from busted pipes, even insurance deductibles, they all qualify. So it is important for United Way to um, remind um, people that we're here for them whether it's the COVID-19 fund, we were here for, to help them with that. Um, so again, not just in a time of crisis, but especially in a time of crisis that United Way is here. That program will remain open until all of those funds run out. Earlier today, President Biden announcing several executive actions on gun violence. Coming up, hear what the president is saying to Congress about what he wants to see in that chamber. Plus details on a bill the Texas House has passed to address active shooter situations. Today, President Biden announcing new executive actions aimed at gun safety. He wants the DOJ to regulate so-called ghost guns and limit stabilizing braces, like the ones used in Boulder, to turn a pistol into a kind of short-barreled rifle. The president says these are far more sweeping measures, and he's calling on Congress to do a heck of a lot more. They've offered plenty of thoughts and prayers, members of Congress, but they've passed not a single new federal law to reduce gun violence. Enough prayers. Time for some action. Last month, the House passing several bills expanding background checks, but those have stalled out in the Senate. We'll have more on those executive actions coming up in the 6.30 half hour. A bill proposing an active shooting warning system is on its way to the Texas Senate. House Bill 103S proposed system would alert the public whenever an active shooter scene is ongoing. Those alerts would likely be aired by broadcast volunteers. The estimated cost of the system is about $8 million. bucks. The bill received unanimous approval in the House. The Waco Transit System could soon be seeing a major overhaul, but we'll tell you about the big hefty price tag that could jeopardize it. Plus, Chipotle is offering its employees a chance to go to college for free. We'll explain coming up shortly. Turns out an overhaul of the Waco transit system could cost as much as $35 million. That's according to a new report by the Waco Tribune Herald. The new numbers nearly double what was originally predicted. Waco Transit is mainly looking to cut down on crosstown travel with the proposed changes. Chipotle is making a big contribution to education. The company is set to offer free degrees to its employees in a range of fields. Those include agriculture, culinary arts, and hospitality. The company's debt-free degree program includes almost 100 degree options available at 10 universities. Employees can take part in the program after just 120 days of employment. Urban areas here in Central Texas are growing and they're doing so fast. Coming up, we'll take a look at how that growth is impacting farmland. We continue to follow that developing news out of Bryan. A mass shooting there has left at least one dead. A suspect is now in custody in Grimes County. That's where we find 25 News reporter Joel Lopez live. Joel, we know there was a very active manhunt for that suspect. Hey, Todd. Yeah, I'm here in Iola along FM 39 where the trooper was shot just up this road. So let me move out of the way so you can see the road is still blocked off. People that live along this road have been getting turned around all day. I mean, just a few people that maybe live right close are being allowed through, but you can see that at least two cars are blocking the, the road. And further up the road is where the trooper was shot. Now joining me is Lieutenant Cummings. So, Lieutenant, so can you explain to me on the condition of the trooper right now? 
Right. Our trooper is in surgery right now. He is in stable condition, and we're certainly asking for prayers for him, and our prayers go out to all those who've been affected by the shooting today. And how did the trooper find themselves at the scene? Because there was a shooting that was happening at the business, so is he just responding? Right. We had multiple law enforcement agencies that were here on FM 39. They were attempting to take the shooter into custody, um, and then during that time, he shot at our trooper, uh, striking him, and then uh, he was life flighted to the uh, St. Joseph's Hospital, where he's currently in surgery. And tell us about the suspect that you said that they are, the suspect is in custody? That's correct. The suspect is in custody. Our investigators, Texas Rangers, Criminal Investigations Division, and multiple law enforcement agencies are down there working this crime scene right now, um, trying to get a lot of answers that not only we want, but the community wants as well. As far as the suspect, do we know if they're male, female? I don't have any information on the suspect yet. This is an ongoing uh, um, situation right now, so we're trying to get a lot of those answers and be able to confirm them. And I know the shooting happened a, like a few uh, further down the road. Do you know why I have it closed up so far away? Right. Well, we have a large scene down there. So as you can see, if you look above us, we've got the, our, our aircraft assets that are above us as well. So we're trying to make sure that our investigators have plenty of room to work uh, and they can get all the answers if necessary for this investigation. Do you believe anybody else was involved? Is that why the chopper is still looking around? Uh, this is a very active and ongoing investigation. So those are answers that we're currently trying to look for right now. And that's the reason why we have a team of investigators down there who are trying to get those answers. All right, Lieutenant, thank you so much. And again, to recap, there was a shooting out of Bryan business that left four people injured and at least one person dead. That trooper is in critical condition, but he's in stable condition in the hospital. So Todd will bring you any information as it develops here with Lieutenant Cummings and tossing it back to you. All right, Joe Lopez live tonight in Grimes County for us. Urban areas are growing quickly here in Texas, especially central Texas. So what does that mean for farmland and rural areas? 25 News reporter Dennis Turner went to find out. Farmland doesn't just grow crops anymore. It also sprouts subdivisions, like the one where the Berkowitz family lives. Why here? Community. Community, yeah. We definitely... Have uh, families with young children around yeah. the same age. This, this, all of our neighbors have families that are about kids about the same age as our kids. Developers cater to folks like these who have income and mobility. Experts say we'll have to give up a little more farmland to support that growth. Honest truth is, we're still going to see a lot of development on places that are right now cornfield. But get this, not all the gobbling of farmland comes from cities. It comes as no surprise that cities and suburbs took up the most agricultural land in the study from the American Farmland Trust. But here's the real shocker. 41% of the lost acres actually came from development in rural areas. And what's happening there? Families no longer involved in farming continue selling out. I understand why they're, why they're uh, you know, making the decision to sell. Mm -hmm. And you still have to doesn't some. make it any easier to take, does it? No, it doesn't. And even though developers market these homes as rural, Thomas remembers how it used to be. There were, you know, 100 acre farms, uh, you know, that were largely owned by people who operate those farms. And they had a, a real attraction to that land. I mean, it was, it was special. Yeah. They may have different reasons, but he and his neighbors both call this land their little slice of heaven. Dennis Turner, 25 News. Ascension Providence is the first hospital in Waco to offer a new minimally invasive procedure to help prevent a stroke. The T-car helps with artery treatments. The procedure pushes any buildup that breaks loose in the arteries down and travels it away from the brain. Patients say it's already making a huge difference. I really didn't think I had to finish it. I did, and they fixed it, and I'm happy. Patients who undergo the treatment usually can go home the very next day. So far, more than 500,000 people have signed up for Affordable Care Act coverage during this extra enrollment period. The Biden administration created the period to help people during the pandemic. Subsidies on ACA health plans started being offered through the American Rescue Plan on April 1st. The period for enrollment now runs through August 15th. All right, we are tracking a mean thunderstorm coming through. Let's go ahead and check in with Josh. Yeah, and we are continuing to track this severe thunderstorm that's working through parts of McClendon County. You can see it's pretty much the only thunderstorm out there right now, but it is definitely a mean one as it's working down now. Highway 317 over parts of western McClendon County. That means those of you from Crawford to McGregor now seeing this thunderstorm. A severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Bosque, Coriel, and McClendon County officially until 7.15 p.m. You notice one thing, we're now seeing a little bit less of the deeper reds that we were seeing when it was over Bosque County. This is no longer 
as big of a hail producer as it was over Bosque County, but is still producing some large hail at this time. You notice all the lightning in it as well. That is a sign this thunderstorm is still extremely organized. Here's the closest view of it. That core of the hail is going to be right over here, pretty much right across Crawford, and this thunderstorm is working down to the south at about 25 miles per hour. So we'll go ahead and put a track on that storm for you as it works down to the south at about 25 miles per hour. I want to point out that the heaviest part of the thunderstorm is west of Waco and is likely going to miss the Waco area. So those of you in Waco can breathe a sigh of relief right there, but still a very mean thunderstorm that's working down to the south. So that'll be putting it down towards McGregor over towards Lorena as well. You're potentially rolling through McGregor around 650, Woodway around 655, the Hewitt area potentially around 704, and then maybe towards Lorena by around 715. Again, that's if it continues on its current track. I think it's trying to dive a little bit further to the south towards the McGregor area though. There's also a hook with this storm. So we try to look at the wind part of this storm as well because that's where you look to see if there's any sort of rotation. And then at this time, the good news is it looks like the rotation is very broad. Notice how the pink and the green are not very close together. That means we aren't looking at a tornadic situation, but we are looking at some very strong winds on the backside of this storm now that's showing up in the green there that's going to be rolling through McGregor, potentially up to around 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. They'll be entering the city of McGregor shortly. So if you are in McGregor right now, you need to be heading maybe towards the center of your house and away from windows as that continues to push off to the west. We're going to go ahead and look at our Exco Eagle Eye real quick, give you a view of that storm. One thing that I'm noticing is the base of this storm is not very low, which is good news. That means it's less of a tornado threat, more of that high wind and hail threat. And then here's the view from our Exco Eagle Eye at the 25 News Studios. Again, that hail core that is falling over parts of the uh, western parts of McLennan County. As again, that storm will continue working down to the south. That's the only severe thunderstorm we have right now, but we are watching a few more storms trying to pop up over here towards Gatesville and Temple. And again, severe thunderstorm warning continuing until 715. We'll continue to track it for you and have the details on more thunderstorms that could be forming tomorrow coming up in the forecast. All right, Josh, we'll see you in just a minute. President Biden announcing several executive orders today aimed at preventing gun violence, but will they hold up in court? Will they prevent another mass shooting like that that we're seeing right now on Bryan? Joe St. George is taking a closer look. After recent mass shootings in Atlanta, Boulder, Colorado, and California, President Biden issuing six executive orders on gun control. Most significantly, he's requiring the Justice Department to issue new guidance within the next few weeks on ghost guns, stabilizing braces that are used on guns, and red flag laws. Ghost guns are handmade or self-assembled firearms that don't have serial numbers, and owners don't have to follow background check rules. Stabilizing braces make firing pistols easier, and they were used in Boulder. And red flag laws already exist in some states and allow law enforcement to take away guns from people deemed dangerous by a judge. This is an epidemic, for God's sake, and it has to stop. Senior White House officials briefing reporters that the president's actions are merely a first step. And while gun control advocates are grateful something is being done, the news is being met by some as a bit underwhelming. After all, President Biden is not banning the importation of assault rifles, nor is he addressing federal background check reform issues promised during the campaign. So why isn't the president doing more? Well, legal scholars say it's because he doesn't want his policies, his actions to be struck down in court. My sense is that the Biden administration is very aware of the potential legal challenges. Paul Schiff Berman is a law professor at George Washington University and says the president is clearly crafting his orders so they can withstand legal challenges. The current Supreme Court is more inclined to rule in favor of gun rights than any Supreme Court we have had in decades. As for whether more is on the way, the White House appears to have more flexibility than Congress, where the issue remains polarizing. And on this topic, a lack of bipartisanship means the votes aren't there to change any laws. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Thank you, Joe. More witnesses are now taking the stand in the Derek Chauvin murder trial in Minnesota. Coming up, we'll have the latest details from Minneapolis. Now to the latest tonight in the trial of former police officer Derek Chauvin, charged in the death of George Floyd. More witnesses taking the stand today. Chanley Painter from our sister station, Court TV, has the latest. 
George Floyd died of a low level of oxygen while being pinned on the ground with his hand cuffed behind him. That's what the jury learned from the state's expert Dr. Martin Tobin, a lung and critical care specialist from Chicago who is nationally known for his expertise on breathing. Jurors listened intently to Dr. Tobin's testimony explaining how the lungs of a person suffering from a health ailment may be impacted while in a prone position and the result of fentanyl in George Floyd's system. The problem is if they have pneumonia, they have bad matching between the blood vessels going through the lungs and the air sacs. In people who have pneumonia, COVID, whatever, that matching is going to be very bad, and that's what leads to the worse oxygenation in those patients. The second reason why you know fentanyl is not ha causing the depression of his respiration. What you're seeing is that the increase